<laughs> Spooky greetings. Hi, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and today I'd like to share with you some alternate project ideas that I created using the contents of the September 2018 Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up! titled Frights and Delights. This kit came straight to my mailbox, wrapped up in this adorable container, and included all the papers, cellophane bags, adhesives, die-cut characters, twine, and stickers that I needed to make 24 adorable Halloween treat bags. I also got a fantastic stamp set and a mini ink pad that I can continue to use over and over again even after my consumables from the kit are used up. All I need is my clear block to mount and use my stamps, and this one came free with my first kit, and my scissors. Stampin' Up! includes a mini publication also with photos and written directions, tips and additional details, and it shares a how-to video for each and every kit. These kits are from Stampin' Up! so the colors, images, and supplies coordinate with many other Stampin' Up! products. I'll be using some of these coordinating products and a few extra supplies as I share my unique projects. You can find these items listed below and linked to my online store. You can also look below for links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription through me so I can spoil you with exclusive ideas, gifts, and prizes, and joining my paper pumpkin fan club on Facebook where you can see even more alternate project ideas shared daily. If you're watching my video on YouTube, you can also click on the link below that will lead you to my website where I've shared close-up photos of what I'll be sharing today. I'm excited to create, so let's get started. So the instructions that come with the kit are pretty darn awesome, but I just want to add a couple more ideas that you might want to try to make your bag assembly a little bit easier. Those items are an embossing buddy and a stapler. So an embossing buddy is a tool that we use when we do heat embossing. And what it does is when you wipe it on the cardstock, it removes the oils from your fingertips, things that were left onto the cardstock that might hang onto little pieces of embossing powder. But you can also use this because there's a slight, there's like a little dusty powder in here. You can also use it to get rid of the stickies on stickers. So if you want to make a sticker non-sticky, or not sticky, you would take and flip it over and just pounce this on the back side and it will put that little powder on there and um, make it into cardstock instead of stickers. Which is great because these little letters here, these words that go across our tags are stickers and you don't want them kind of sticking to your project from behind there. Another tip is when you're putting together your bag, if you wrap your tag around like this and then you staple it onto your bag. Then you don't have to worry about it pouncing forward and it will hold real snug. There are lots of items that you can fill your bags with. You can fill them with goldfish crackers and gum and, and jelly beans and gumballs, um, chocolates, non-treat items um, like a super ball or you know any kind of gifty thing that would fit into this tiny bag. And in fact on the Facebook um, group, the Paper Pumpkin Fan Club on Facebook, there's a, a whole thread where people are talking about lots of ideas of things that you can put into the bags. But I really want to um, point out that there's some candy stores out there, the one that I'm thinking of is Party City, where you can buy your candy in color groups, which is great for your themed parties and stuff like that. So that's what I did with my purple, black, and green candies here. All right, so now I've got my candy in my bag, and before I put my little fun character on the front, I'm going to wrap this over the top, and then instead of sta stapling front to back, I'm going to flip my stapler around, and I'm going to staple this way. That way, when you see the back side of your bag, you don't have the rough part of the staple there. And then we can just take our little character that already has the dimensionals on it and stick it onto the rough side of the little stapler. So here I have my treat bags put together, but I've got lots of alternate projects for you. This one, by the way, was filled with, what are those called, Cheez-Its? So lots of fun ideas. Okay, let's get started with the alternates, though. The first project that I'm going to share 
was featured on Stampin' Up's blog. Um, it was one that was also shared in the Facebook Live broadcast. But it's kind of hard to explain just with photos. It's a fun fold kind of card. It has a cute little opening on it. And so I thought I would walk you through that in my video. So what you'll need from the kit is, of course, the stamps from the set, one of the cellophane bags, and a fun little character. Of course, we need this guy with that character to make his eyes shine. And then you'll need about 18 inches of twine. Extra supplies for this card that I'm going to do is going to be the black, ooh, that's bright, <laughs> the basic black cardstock and gorgeous grape. And then um, I'm going to use some snail, some rhinestones, of course my snips, and I assign one to be my ribbon cutting scissors and one to be a paper cutting scissors. That way my ribbon one doesn't get dull because paper dulls scissors. I'm also going to bring in a different ink pad, although you can use the basic gray, but I'm going to use the Memento Tuxedo Black and my trimmer. Sorry, I've got some stuff over here. There we go. And my Stampin' Trimmer to cut the cardstock. Now, just want to point out that Basic Gray also comes in a larger size ink pad, and that's what I'll be using during the video. I'll also be using my clear blocks that you can get in the online store. These are ergonomic, so they fit in your hands because they have like little curves on them, um, versus the one that you get free with your kit. But you have those things, so you wouldn't need to purchase them. And I may even bring in this wonderful tool called Take a Pick. It's got some great features to it. We'll start by cutting our cardstock, and you actually don't need a lot of black, although black looks pretty dominant on the card, but we're just going to cut a piece that is four inches wide. Oh, that black really makes the, the camera glare, sorry about that. But you'll go to the four inch mark to cut that, and then you can bring it over to the five and a quarter inch mark to cut your other piece. And hopefully you can see that there, five and a quarter. So that's what we'll need for the black. And then for the gorgeous grape color, we're going to need a wider piece that is four and a quarter inches wide and five and a half inches long. These two are going to layer together like that. And then from this sheet that's cut here, you can also cut out two strips that are two and a quarter inches, or I'm sorry, two and an eighth. Let's zoom in so you can see. So these strips will be two and an eighth inches wide, which basically, when you do that with one, it creates the other one because four and a quarter divided in half is two and an eighth. But one of these, we're going to put a little notch in. We're going to, um, we're going to score it. So in, move your cutting blade away and bring your scoring blade in. And we're going to bring this piece to the four and three quarter inch mark and then we're going to score. So we're scoring at three quarter inches this way. That will allow us to tuck that flap into and behind the black like this. And then this piece is going to be slightly smaller than four and a quarter inches. So we're going to actually trim off when we put it to here at four and five eighths, which is just slightly less than four and three quarters, we're trimming off seven eighths of an inch over on this side. And that will go behind this piece because our bag, you'll see, the bag is pleated so we need to work with that. And then you'll need a couple pieces for the inside of the card. So you'll take this piece and just cut it to two inches wide here by four inches. And then these you can use for something else later on, but we're going to trim this piece down to a three inch long piece and a one inch long piece. And this will be for the inside of the card for our, for our sentiment, for our, our greeting. Okay, the first step is going to be stamping our sentiment. So we're going to stamp our frights and delights message right here. And then we're going to add a couple little spiders. Then of course we're going to put the shiny stuff behind our little guy here. And I'm using snail adhesive, but you do get glue dots in the kit, so you don't necessarily need to have snail adhesive. I just prefer it. So there's his eyeballs. And for the bag, we're going to slip in. See how it's pleated here? We're going to slip in this long piece in the front layer, and there's really no front or back to these bags as I've found out whatever side you like best, I guess. 
We're going to slip that in like that. And then we're going to flip it over and see how you can still see the pleats there. We're going to put this piece inside that section like that. Then we're going to take some adhesive from the kit and with our take a pick tool we can just lift up one of these glue dots and we're going to open up our bag like that so that we can see the inside there. We're going to place one of the glue dots in that spot in here. We'll just pull it out so you can see where I'm putting it right there and we'll put another one right about there and then this tool is great for taking off the backings of these as well. I'm loving this tool. <laughs> it's new so I'm very excited about it. Then you just shove that back into the bag and push this one down all the way and sandwich them together. Now they will still slide um, if you don't want them to slide when you put your character on the front you can also have some adhesive that is going to be behind this guy so you could go in here and you can add another glue dot or two right in that little spot. And when this, with this tool, you can reach in and stick that glue dot right where you want it to go. So next, we're going to add some little eyeballs to him. And I'm still kind of a fan of my scissors for doing this, but you can use the Take Your Pick tool to add those eyeballs like that. So now he's got shiny centers of his eyes. It's a little fancier. We'll grab our, our twine and we'll wrap this around. And it doesn't matter as long as um, you're not adhering it to the cardstock yet. But we're going to wrap it around and make sure it's straight. Doesn't matter where it is, but just make sure it's going horizontal. Hold it down and tie a knot. And after you have a knot, then you're going to tie a bow. And the twine does get twisted, so when you tie your bow, make sure that you're not tying real um, tight until you actually get to the knot part. Then you can take and fold your cardstock a little bit, curve it in, and you can adjust it that way. You can also move it up and down. So we're going to have to adjust this later. Let's next take and, um, actually we're going to do this first. We're going to take and adhere this to the back right there. And I'm going about three quarters of an inch away from the side. Once you have that in place, then you can take and adjust your twine even more. And since this piece, these sentiment pieces I should say, are two inches wide, they are going to be covered up when you, when you put the flap down. So let's put those in now. And you can have them as high up as you want them. I like to have them about oh, a little over a quarter of an inch away and then I can slide this down and then this one can go right underneath it. It's as if the twine has cut my little piece in half here or into two sections I should say. Okay, And giving that much space at the top gives you an equal space on the side here on the bottom. I just, I, I don't know, I like that. <laughs> okay, now we can add this to the front of our card or should I say to the card base, sorry, with dimensionals, which I forgot to tell you. Yes, you need the dimensionals from the kit for this card. Okay, I am going to take and secure this bag to my card because I've noticed it does slip a lot more than the other ones that I've made. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up one of these glue dots and I'm going to pull open the bag a bit, curve it open, and we'll just insert it with this tool. And stick it right behind our little ghost guy there. Now the backing isn't off yet, but I do have the glue dot in place. So now I can slide this open, get the backing off. slide it back on and press it down. 
and now our bag doesn't move on us. Some of the other bags I've noticed um, fit, the paper is more secure in there and it just kind of clings to it so it doesn't slide off. But I want that guy to stay on there. So here is our finished version of that card, but I want to show you a couple other versions. So you saw the, the pumpkin one and he also had the rhinestones in the eyes and has the little spider bag. That one says, eek, it's Halloween. But what's fun about, um, let's see here, let's show you this one next. So what's fun about these is that you can also slip little gift cards into the cellophane bag area. Here, look at that. I have my ghost going two different directions. Isn't that awesome? You can flip them. <laughs> and so on this one, I have done that. I've inserted a gift card at the top here. So there's our happy birthday gift card, which fits perfectly into this size bag. So happy booth day. I got that idea from someone who shared an alternate project on the Paper Pumpkin fan club. Oh, there's so many ideas there. So let me show you how I did that. So to get that fun little sentiment, I brought in an extra stamp set that I can alter. The happy birthday image in this stamp set called Detailed with Love can be masked. You can get rid of the B-I-R or even the B-I-R-T-H if you want it to say boo day. So I made mine say booth day. I got rid of the B-I-R by taking some washing ta washi tape or you can use masking tape. Either one works. And you're going to cover up what you don't want to have inked up. So I'm covering up my B-I-R and I'm inking up my stamp. Then I have to remove this tape be careful because that tape does have ink on it so you don't want it to get on your hands and ruin your project. And then I know already from doing a little experiment on the side that I needed to stamp that far over to the right hand side of my two inch wide piece of paper. Then the next thing I'm going to do is mask the boo, the sentiment that's in this kit. So this, this um, image comes with the kit and I'm going to mask off the exclamation mark. So I'm inking up just the boo part peeling off the tape again and this one I can see right over the top which is great and I can stamp that down and then I have that fun little sentiment happy booth day so someone who has a birthday around Halloween fun little card for them and it's a gift card holder so yes you can can slide that right in there the colors that I used for these cards are basic black gorgeous grape Granny Apple Green and Mango Melody and they all come in the Brights collection of cardstock so you could instead of buying all three packs or all, well, all three packs separately you could get the black and then you could get a pack of Brights. It's a little bit more cost effective that way. Let's try the next project now. I almost forgot to mention something. An advantage to this card where the bag slips off versus where it's tacked on is that if you give it to your recipient and they take it off like that, they can re-gift that bag by just grabbing a twisty tie from the kitchen, filling it with candies, and boom, they've got a gift to re-give on Halloween night. Okay, so we know that gift cards fit into those cellophane bags perfectly because gift cards are typically two and an eighth inches wide, just like the bags. So I'm going to show you a fun little gift card holder that's even simpler than that card. We're going to take some leftover gorgeous grape cardstock and our trimmer and we're going to cut to two and an eighth inches and a gift card is two and an eighth this way but it is three and three eighths this way. So we're going to make it fit exactly. Now you could go a little longer if you want to but you don't want to go too much longer or the bag won't shut. So now we've got a piece of cardstock that fits our gift card just perfectly. The supplies that you'll need besides the contents of the kit will be a stapler, a paper trimmer, paper snips or scissors, some cardstock that coordinates with what you want. Now you can really use any color for this. I just picked Gorgeous Grape because we've already used it. The take a pick tool which is handy but not necessary. And then I'm bringing in these spider trinkets. These are from the holiday catalog and they are so cute. They look like little tiny silver and black spiders. Another optional thing to bring in would be scrap paper and one of our Stampin' Blends markers. I'm recommending black for this. From the kit you're going to need your adhesives, you're going to need one of your cellophane bags, some of the twine, and for this one we're going to use the pumpkin and the metallic background for that pumpkin. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take our paper and we're going to slide it into one side of our bag and the gift card into the other side, just like we did with the card. We're using the channels of the bag. And this will be the back. And then we'll just roll down the very top part of the bag. We're going to put our twine across the middle and then we're going to come in and we're going to staple. We want the twine to be within the staple. And then we can take and tie our bow. Then you can come in with your, your scissors and snip your, your ribbon, cut it to size. And with your little spider trinket, there's a little ring in there, um, a jump ring I think they call it. So we're going to take our snips and we're going to insert it into the jump ring and then we're going to pry it open to open up that jump ring. So you can see, hopefully, it's opened up and now we can just take that right off so it doesn't have to hang from anything. We can just glue dot it onto our project. Now you could take your pumpkin and you could just put it right on there like that. He's a happy little pumpkin. He's got the silver. But we're going to flip it over and we're going to use the white side of the pumpkin because I think he looks scarier. <laughs> so in order to give him some um, some dimension, we're going to also put a backing on him. But this backing is white. So white on white is kind of boring. That's when we're going to bring in our scrap paper and our blends marker. Our blends markers color very nicely. They color on pretty much any, any surface um, and they have a very nice smooth look after they're done being colored, not streaked or anything like that. So um, they're also great for blending colors. You, you get a light and a dark if you want to buy them in a combo pack. You can, you can also color on the other side, by the way. You can color directly onto here because you can color on non-porous surfaces. Now, because this is a non-porous surface, you're going to see more streaking. So if I go in this direction now, you're going to see that. But as long as you're really careful, like you would be with using markers on regular paper, regular markers, you can get a very non-streaky look overall. So I can make both sides black if I really want to. We're going to flip that over though. And because it's non-porous, it takes a while to dry. So I'm just rubbing that extra, extra off. It'll eventually dry. And we're going to put our pumpkin on like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and take this. And we're going to put dimensionals on the back of our orange guy here. So grab your scissors again. This time I would recommend a paper scissors or one that you've set aside for adhesive. And you can just snip through your dimensionals, make them cut in half, and we'll grab those smaller pieces. We do sell mini dimensionals that you can get in the online store, but you can also trim these if you want to save money and spend it on something else. <laughs> so now you can see I've put him up on dimensionals so he comes out a little bit from that surface. We're going to go ahead and put some glue dots down onto our bag. And we're going to take one of these, flip it over, and roll it. And with the help of this tool, it helps to get a rolled up glue dot so much faster. So now we can take that glue dot and stick it on the back side of our spider. As long as it doesn't stick to your fingernails. Which, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I had them specially done. They have little spider webs on them, on a few of them. <laughs> Had to match the kit. So now we have our spider ready. And now we have our pumpkin. And we're going to stick our little spider right here, crawling off the top of the pumpkin. And to make that pumpkin just maybe a little spookier, let's bring in those rhinestones again. This is where I was telling you, to me it's much easier to pick up rhinestones with the paper snips. I'll get better at using the take a pick tool with it, but see, now doesn't that look spooky? Okay, I love him. <laughs> I so wanted to do a white pumpkin. Okay, and then this is another gift card holder idea, and I took the bat and put some eyes on him just like I did with the card. And um, this is one of the tags that come in the kit, but it's flipped over to look like a tombstone. So this way you can write to and from on the front side. And on the back side, you have the gift card showing through. 
So now we're going to bring that tombstone idea into a 12 by 12 scrapbook page spread because I make one of those with every kit. I love scrapbooking. <laughs> so from the kit you're going to need the tags and I've cut every one of these three tags in half at the, at the score line. So every one of these has a score line in it. You're just going to cut it right there. And then I have some of these silver edged cards and I cut those in half. Um, took a couple of those. We're going to use the stamp set from the kit, of course, a couple of the bats, some twine, some memento tuxedo black, some basic gray 12 by 12 cardstock, and you can get this in the variety pack from the neutrals. And then I'm, I'm not sure what else I'm bringing in because I haven't created the pages yet, so let's see what we do. And here are your finished pages. So again, what I did was I took and stuck these little guys into some, you know, some ground that I created with mossy meadow cardstock that I tore. I also used uh, the tool, the pick tool, to lift it up and pull it out a little bit, give it dimension. The twine is attached with rolled up glue dots in a couple spots just to give a little black accenting, silver accenting on the bottom. Bats are put on dimensionals. Rhinestones were colored with the blends marker, the black stamp and blends marker. I stamped a few bats up there as well with the Memento Tuxedo Black ink, which I used on the tombstones. And then of course we got the spooky and the eek down here, some subtle words. And then we have boo, which stands out pretty good. A fun spread for Halloween trick-or-treating type uh, photos. These next two ideas are very simple yet sweet and I mean that literally. <laughs> what we're gonna do is use the pumpkin and the silver backing for the pumpkin from the kit, stamps and of course the basic gray ink. We're bringing in this fun punch called the pretty label punch. I'm gonna use my really thick glue dots. These are a little bit thicker. Some Whisper White cardstock, toothpicks, and paper trimmer. The stamp that I'm going to use for this is the one that says it's Halloween and it's very, very thin. It doesn't have a lot of height to it. So we're going to cut a strip of cardstock from this Whisper White scrap that's only 3 eighths of an inch high. And then we're going to take our pretty label punch and we're going to insert this strip of cardstock right in the middle and we're going to cut like that. So now we have rounded ends. We're going to bring in these pieces and our glue dots and our toothpick. And we're going to start with the glue dot on the back side, lower part of the pumpkin where his tooth is. And there we have a nice thick glue dot. The toothpick is going to go right there. And then we're going to put a few more glue dots on the back side here so we can connect the pumpkin to the silver background piece. And now that we have that loaded with glue dots, we can put this on the back side. The glue dots are thicker and allow the silver layer to go behind a lot easier and still hold on to the toothpick. And we don't need it to be super tight. Now we're going to take this piece and we're going to glue dot it right in the middle. And then we're going to bring in the sweet. 
And my boys have been dying to try these. These are the pumpkin flavor muffins that we found in the grocery store. And so this little guy would just go right into the top of a pumpkin or the top of a muffin to decorate for Halloween. If you don't want to do Halloween, we're going to use that pumpkin to trace a pumpkin shape onto some pumpkin, pumpkin pie cardstock. So I've already done that. I've taken and traced that guy with a pencil onto pumpkin pie cardstock. And we're going to take our snips and we're just going to finish cutting him out. And since we're going to see both sides, we might as well erase around the edges just to get that extra pencil away from there. And now I'm going to bring a, a stamp set in that has a Thanksgiving sentiment. And this is called Painted Harvest. It has quite a few actually. So we're going to stamp the one that says gather together and give thanks on a strip of whisper white that is a little bit thicker. This one is five, uh, five eighths of an inch high. And because Thanksgiving tends to use more earthy colors, we're going to use early espresso ink for this. When you become a subscriber, you collect lots of ink. All those little ink spots can be used over and over again later on with other projects. So now we want to punch this out and it does fit, thankfully, but if it did not, here's a little trick that you can do. You can insert one end into your punch and punch it and then you can insert the other end into the other side and give it a punch. But ours does fit, so I want I want to hang on to that so I have something to hold on to. And we're just going to center it in there and punch it out. Now we're going to bring in the pumpkin, toothpick, and some fun copper copper trim to be exact. And you can get the look of a bow just by pulling the mesh part open like that. It's fun. <laughs> and then we're going to put the glue dots on the front of the pumpkin this time, right through the middle. We're going to lay our toothpick right on there like that and we're going to use some more glue dots kind of towards the outside not towards the middle of this so much but the outside so that this will attach to the pumpkin like that and now we can turn that pumpkin that we may not have wanted for Halloween into a fun little Thanksgiving little muffin. Let's bring it down a little bit. I like that better down there. There. So now we have one for Thanksgiving and we have one for Halloween. Pretty fun, huh? And easy. So let's say you're one of those people that's not real big into Halloween and you decide to use your pumpkins for this idea. Um, something Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving-ish, right? Well, you've got also um, these fun little ghosts and bats that are left over, and I thought, let's just move into the next holiday, which is Christmas. So this is what I did. I took um, two styles of these tags. This one here, which will fold over like that. Um, this one does not fold over so well because you can still see some orange going through if you look from the front. So we're going to put those aside, but we're going to take these two tags, which work really well on the reverse side, and we're going to take the bat and the ghost, and we're going to alter them. So I'm bringing in my scrap paper right now. We'll start with, let's just start with the bat. And you're going to take and cut from the head of the bat to the tail. But when you cut, you're going to do some, like a little zigzaggy kind of cut. So we're going to start, maybe it'll be easier, no, it'll be easier to see this way. Okay, so we're going to do a zigzaggy cut. We're going to cut in, and then out, and then in, and then down to the head. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and actually it's easier for me to cut on this side, so you have to deal with the white side. 
cut in and out and in and it's okay if it's not even and then down to the head and then right here let's just get that rounded look out of there get rid of the roundedness of that that head of the bat and then with these two pieces here we're going to trim off those little notches so we're going to get rid of that and we're going to get rid of that with our ghost we're going to turn it upside down we're going to bring in blends markers let's start with the green this is our shaded spruce and we're just going to color on the white side of the bat with our shaded spruce and I noticed we were too far away so I had to zoom in <laughs> so we'll blend all of this all this color onto the back side of our bats okay after coloring those pieces we're going to flip them over and we're going to put adhesive on the back side of this middle part of the bat and attach this one to the side of it like that then we're going to flip it over again put some adhesive back there and add this one to the other side so it looks pretty even and then we're going to put some dimensionals on the back side like so and we're going to set it aside on this one we're going to color with our ivory blends marker no oh, I'm sorry this is light petal pink and we're going to go right straight across now you could use ivory you could use bronze for this absolutely and you'll see why in just a minute and then we've got dark real red that was light shaded spruce by the way I may have said dark but it was light and we're gonna go kind of zigzaggy up like this and then we're gonna color in I'd have to dip down and clean that up a little bit and you could color this green if you wanted to too a shade of green but I just chose real red to give it give it a different look alright I think you might know what these are turning into let's flip this oh that's dirty side here I'll flip it over so you can see better alright what do we have we have a Christmas tree and we have a little elf so what I did then is I took the Christmas tree and I attached it to one of these tags like this I stamped the to and the from on the back side put it on there with a dimensional and then a rhinestone at the top now there is a star stamp in this kit but I chose to give it a little sparkle so then this would just go over uh, a cellophane bag and we do have cellophane bags available so you could use the 2x8 cellophane bags fill them with treats, I don't know, candy canes or something and stick that on there you can staple it on and then put your black twine on there the black twine which has the silver in it would look really nice because you're using black ink on the other side um, this is what I did to the other one I turned it into an elf with by putting the silver circle behind it but the, the white side and then I just took a black, a basic black marker and did hand drew in a little nose and a mouth and eyes put a rhinestone on there for the, ta or the little pom pom on the end of the hat put him up on dimensionals but stuck this flat down to hold the little corner of the hat and here's another bag that we have in the online store this is our gusseted um, cellophane bags they're slightly larger than the bags that are in the kit but they will do a wonderful job of getting lots of candy inside of a little treat bag there so there's another idea if you wanted something non Halloweenish. there we go so I couldn't let them just sit and not be finished 
I had to finish my little tags, put them in tree, put the little treats in the bags and all that. So we have um, a couple different Christmas trees here. We have the dark shaded spruce Christmas tree and then the light one, um, but both done the same way. And this is with our uh, gusseted bag. And then this is our eight by uh, two, two by eight inch bag. Candy cane fits perfectly in there. This little elf guy is colored in with the bronze uh, marker. And then this one is the light petal pink. So a couple fun variations. Now that you've watched my video, I hope you can see that there's so much more to these kits than meets the eye. In the U.S., these kits are just $19.95 plus tax. This price includes the shipping. And even though it's set up as a subscription program, there's no commitment, so you can stop your subscription at any time. I hope you got some inspiration from what I've shared. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can catch more Paper Pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my website at stampyourartout.com so that you can view close-up photos of these projects, see photos of other Paper Pumpkin kit ideas in future and past posts, and see many other great ideas that I share using Stampin' Up! products. If you're watching my video on YouTube, look for links in my description below. And to get spoiled with extra goodies, gifts, prizes, and extra exclusive Paper Pumpkin project ideas, get your subscription started with me as your demonstrator. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.